Hey folks, Aaron here from Bean Sprout. Um, I've been prototyping and designing some new models this this uh, winter, so I thought I'd share a little bit about that process on one of them, and uh, you know, kind of also share my roadblocks because I banged my head against a wall a few times on this this project, and it should have been easier. Um, so what I'm, uh, I just figured for some of you creative types, maybe you'll like uh, hearing about my process, or um, maybe it'll be helpful to somebody else trying to make something. Um, so uh, typically I've been making uh, three sizes of ukulele, the alto, tenor, and baritone. Alto is basically my design. It's um, a general purpose small uke that's bigger than a soprano, smaller than a concert. It's been really successful, but I've had enough people recently uh, ask me about kind of true soprano ukuleles that I thought I'd give it a whirl. Now to go along with that, um, recently from my friend Lizanne, um, I got this uh, old Martin. And I hadn't played a Martin in many years, um, and it reminded me why I like old ukes like this so much. But it also reminded me of the things that I don't think are appropriate for a modern instrument. So it's so, so lightly built uh, that basically these do one thing. They play that loud, punchy, barky, strummy stuff, and that's awesome. But it's just, it's just like kind of one kind of uh, playing style, and I prefer an instrument that is set up so you can do more than just one thing. Also on the old Martins, the fretboards are very thin, so the strings are very close to the top. There's not much room to get your hands. The necks, especially on this one, is very skinny right here, and it's not comfortable for a lot of people. Um, and they don't have radius fretboards. They don't have geared tuners, you know, stuff like that. So, but I like this uh, little Martin. Um, the other instrument that is uh, in, in inspiration to me is my little Lion and Healy Washburn Soprano. My alto, tenor, and baritone are based on this shape, just blown up to those sizes. Um, and it's a nice instrument too. It's got a warmer tone and it's a little more useful than the um, Martin, I think. But it also has a very thin fretboard, that, so there's not much room to play. And it does have a beefier neck, which I appreciate. Um, but again, flat fretboard, not geared tuners. And actually, now that I look at this one, my bridge is actually lifting off. I might need to repair that. So anyway, uh, when I got started designing this, I had traced, I didn't want to copy a Martin because everybody copies a Martin. And even though I'd already copied a Leiden Healy, for some reason, I decided to try a, a third shape. And I had traced an old Regal ukulele that I loved and it had kind of a very small design. And I thought, I'm gonna go for that. So I made, I got started. And when it got to the first coat of finish, Nicole looked at it and she goes, Aaron, that's cool, but why did you change the shape? Why? All your other ukes are this shape. Why are you doing something new? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> I just did it. And so I, I slept on it, and I took her advice, and I agreed that this is a cool shape, but I'm not going to do it. Um, so this hung on the wall for a couple weeks, and now my son Henry decided he wants it, so he and I are going to finish it, and he can have it. Um, and there's other little things about this as I went that I didn't like uh, enough that I wasn't going to put it out anyway, but it'll be good for Henry, and it uh, he'll be one of a kind. So... Anyway, there's that. So then I changed the shape. I was like, she's right. I got to trace my line in Healy and do that. But, and I got this far on this one, and I didn't like how thin this was. I didn't like the neck wood I had chosen. It made for several problems with the neck. I uh, won't go into here. It also was too thick and bulky there. It also, I made it a little too deep, I thought. The sound hole's in the wrong place, I think. Uh, and... I had this nice curly koa, and I just I didn't have any koa that matched for the sides, so I just used plain koa, but then it bugged me to have unmatching. So all that meant that this has just gone back on the shelf. Um, and I thought, okay, let's try again. So I got started with this one. Do you hear a chicken squawking? That's their egg song. Uh, so I got started on this one, and um, I, again, banged up against the wall on it. Um, I made a lot of soprano ukes. When I worked at my MOA, I did this a bunch. And before I started with my MOA, the only wooden ukes, non banjo ukes I made were sopranos. So this should have been easy, right? Um, but this one, I had a funny thing happen. I had to make a new building mold to build the body in. And I had made a mistake at the neck angle area and I hadn't noticed. So this instrument came out of the mold with a funny angle here that was gonna be hard to correct. So usually you correct that, I correct that against the disc sander that's square this way and square this way, and it makes a good neck joint, and then I can get the neck on. But my disc sander was out of alignment, which has never happened before. And it and so instead of the two errors canceling each other out, they compounded, and it meant that this neck block 
it's just not going to work. I won't be able to get the angle I want without sanding through the sides or doing something really funny with the neck. So I just put this away. Um, you know, now it's got the sound hole where I want it. It's the wood that I like, but it's it can't it can't go on. So there it is. Okay, so now I'm up to my fourth try in six weeks. And I, again, went with some curly koa. Got the sound hole where I wanted it. Got the headstock like I wanted it. Got the thickness right. You know, a uh, few other little things. This will have its own video about th this instrument as a, as a model coming out very soon. But it's got a little thicker fretboard. It's got radius frets. It's got geared tuners. It's got a bone nut and saddle. It's got a neck that's comfortable for modern folks. You know, it sounds like it's not as uh, bright and barky as the Martin. It's not as uh, quiet and warm as the Lion and Healy. I think it's right in the middle. So it's going to be good. Um, and it's really interesting to have gone through this process of a thing that should have been easy. Um, but sometimes it's just not. And so it took four tries to get a prototype out. Um, and that's just... What, that's just what it takes, right? Like, it doesn't matter how long it takes. If it's got to be done, you just do it. Um, and uh, it was a good lesson for me. So, yeah, this is the first Bean Sprout Soprano uh, in the new iteration for 2021. And uh, you'll hear more about it soon. Cheers.